We're just like the mail, baby. All we do here is send it. Tell you what, nah, that does not look bad. Power steering, crank, turbo, and then runs. No, no, a little more than that, but a little bit more, and it's close, man. It's close. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. So that's about beating on the crank, dude. This crank set, but guess what? It matches the rest of the car. You know what I mean? So, um, beat on it for like 15 minutes, and finally got started. Impact. I could have went and got the tool, but guess what? I didn't want it. <laughs> Impact, and then it'll send it right on. Dude, that crank is sent, but matches most of the car. So, yeah, it's all right. So I'm doing some custom trans stick dipstick making here. I'll show you my cutoff. So I first cut off this bigger piece, which I don't know what the point of on the, on the LT1 was. And then I cut off the normal hole because it was like a 90. So I made it so it was just straight. So now it's just straight and then I made a little cut in there and then bent it and then here I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So most of the things are freaking hack on this car. But when I tell you I'm surprised how good I did on this. So that goes in all the way in and then right here I bent that and then it's, I'm gonna drill a hole and then it's gonna just bolt in right there. That is probably one of the best things I've done on this car. And the, no measurements, it's just all eyeball, like, ooh, this might work. Because I was thinking about just buying a low car or whatever stick aftermarket, but no, this is this fits mint. I just gotta drill a hole and bolt it in. That is so awesome. So I got the dipstick in, custom. Even had to make a custom bolt. I mean, I had, I don't know, my junk drawer is not that full. So I found one that was pretty long just cut it down <clears throat> and then i'm running my coolant temp sensor there because whoever had this motor last ran it there because that one's got the plug in it i could easily pull the plug out that put it on the other side but it doesn't really matter it's the same but yeah i was doing some mock-up with the radiator and i fucking tore off those fans i ordered a new 16 inch fan i think those are like 210s or 212s or something they were one 16 inch because those were acting as uh push fans they were on the front so it was pushing air through but how i'm probably gonna run it i'm gonna have the radiator and the trans cooler in the front that's how i want to do mine and the reason i'm not running an intercooler is because probably i'm just gonna save up and then run like one of them uh air to waters those uh fancy ones because i forgot that you can still run them with the low ram too I, th I was thinking only high ram, but I forgot low ram runs them too. Here's what we got Friday. It's coming down. Time is ticking. So I had a guy I know come over and he did what we set up uh, like wiring. And we learned that in the fuel pump relay, uh, 30 which is the green in this is switched with 86 which is a red so the pump is running opposite so when you put power to it or no when it's off um there's power to it and when the relay activates then there's no power to it so like if i were to turn the key if if the key was off the pump would be running and i would turn the key on the pump would turn off so holly messed that up so i'm gonna have to unpin and pin that again to do it um other than that yes yeah, this, this is this is the hard part all this mess but it's actually not even that bad and so far i got the um battery that's where i want to run it and then there's a hole can you kind of see it my pinky and then run the uh hot wire up through here into these clips and down this side's gonna stay above the carpet because there's like a, some weird shield in there this side or in the passenger like front it tucks beneath the carpet goes up 
comes out the grommet and uh, goes to this bus bar. And this bus bar is going to be constant power, so I'm going to have one to the starter and one to the alternator. I think that's how I'm going to run it. Yeah, I think that's all that goes to constant power. Oh, and then one of the one on the ignition goes to the, one of these small ones, one of them small screws down in the middle right there. And then that's going to be my switched power that is going to be... The power is going to go in, the constant power is going to go through the ignition, and then the ignition is going to bring power back into this switched power. So when I flip my ignition switch, it's going to put power to that. So that's going to power like the, um, everything. Yeah, it's just going to power everything. So here's what I got so far. I got, um, where's the end? Got this end made, kind of jank, and then I got this end, and I want to make a video because this is how, I don't have like one of them heavy duty like <clears throat> crimper ones so i'm going to show you how i've been doing them there we go close enough i got enough in there and then i said do this clamp as hard as i oh my god clamp as hard as i can doing that just to get it set a little bit and then i take my the little pov action i uh take this and I go right here, get out the way, there. And I just crack, oh, break it in. And it creates an all right freaking for home, home built thing, you know? Man, slide the, slide the this over, if it'll slide. Use it up, it's mint. All right, it's about 1 a.m. I didn't really get that far. Um, took a couple breaks. Uh, so I had like this pre-made two log. Like, I don't know why I even bought it when I bought a 25 foot thing. And then I bought this extra two foot thing. But it ended up working because I just put this here. Put a little like thing there. Put a little thing there. And then that goes right on the big starter right there. If you can barely see it focus. And that I think is going to work mint. It's like, it's mint yeah um then i got my one wire going over there around fender and then i don't have a fitting it's the two log to a, like quarter inch ring ring terminal and so i got a little bit extra here that i'll cut off and put the ring terminal on tomorrow when it gets here amazon baby um then i got this is for main harness power i think this is main harness power for something. And then this is trans controller power. Yeah, this one's trans control power. That goes right in there. And I read that you shouldn't, like, tie these into the same, um, like, like, what's it called? Shouldn't tie these, the, both powers for the, um, ECU harness, or the motor harness and the trans harness into, like, the same thing but i was thinking like if they don't want you to put it on the same stud and now that it's in a bus bar i feel like that'll be all right because it won't because i already have the alternator and if the alternator is running through there i feel like that wouldn't be switched power because these solid reds go to constant power and then there's the oh it's not in here but then there's a red and white that goes to switched power which i'm gonna run here after I get my ignition switch panel in, I'm going to run the constant power into here. And then there's another uh, small ringlet or ring terminal that goes into here. So when I flip the switch on, ignition on, it'll bring power <clears throat> into this. And this is the switched power, which I could run. I forget what I run off of this. I can't remember. But there's a couple things I run off of it. So, yeah. it's actually And I, this thing, too, these bottom two right here on the heater, like AC delete... That's the perfect spacing for this Amazon bus bar. Up here, I drilled it or self tapered it. But I'm, I like just by chance, I took one of the bolts out just to like mount it here and then put a self tapper in this side. But this is the perfect spacing, which I was pretty, that's awesome, I think. So, yeah, gonna wire up the, get my switched power wired in. And that'll probably be it for tonight. It's getting late and I got an early morning. So, I'm gonna finish that up. So, made some progress. Um, I don't know where I really left off, but there's, what's this? 
I'm trying to think. Um, there's power. This is power from the engine harness. This is power from the trans harness. This third little ring terminal. Um, that's empty. This is power from the back from the battery. I don't have it on right now. This is power to the ignition starter and alternator. And then uh, this is my ignition. So the ignition is going to be pretty much like the solid state. So this is like switched power. And then I have engine switched power from the harness and transmission switched power from it's that harness. So when I, when I flipped, when I flip oh, this switch, or can you even see that? When I flip this switch, it would turn on power. Oh, let's go over here. It would turn on power here and bring back from, from this wire, turn on power and it put power in through these two harnesses, the engine and transmission harness, which are red with white stripe and they come out right here don't uh there's the solid like or uh, continue power like a uh, constant power the solid red in the trans harness but constant power for the engine harness is out there which is a solid red um all i really need to do left in here is ground the engine and trans harness and also figure out how i'm gonna run this uh this is the harness that goes uh to the battery it says run it directly to the um battery and i don't think i got terminals for it these are the only terminals i got which have done all right but they don't go small enough gauge and with a big enough terminal these only go down to uh um they go to a, a 10 gauge which is which is what these are but in the 10 gauge, they only got 5 16ths and quarter inch uh, holes, and I need um, a 3 8 one. So, yeah, we're going to have to wait on that. So, Sunday afternoon, um, engine wiring is, I think, is done, other than I'm going to get a fan. I'm going to wire the fans into the holly, but yeah, engine wiring, all I just is, they need to plug in stuff, and like, I need to put this back through the grommet to hide it um get sensors plug stuff in get a fitting or that's a two aug to a quarter inch post on the battery or the alternator um in here i got those terminal or i got the, or i didn't a uh, guy came and switched uh the i think it was these two it was like eight is 87 and 30 they were switched so i think i already said in a video but when the ignition was off, the pump would run, and you turn the ignition on. The it was it was just backwards how it was. So all the wiring is kind of like temporarily tucked up and like wrapped up in there. If you could kind of see it. Um, then I got the fuel pump wire coming down. I spliced it into another because it was too short. So I spliced it into there. Comes over here, goes over the side, down into here, and into my uh secondary relay for it and to that i already have my this is a jegs kit so the yellow goes to your like um switch power gray goes to ground red is constant power which i just did and your purple goes to the pump yeah that's it oh I, oh no because i also need to i was gonna run an inline fuse but i don't have one so the Jags kit comes with this like little 30, 30 amp, I think. It's a 30 amper. Yeah, 30 amp circuit breaker. So I'm just going to splice in this somewhere in, in there um, from the relay to constant power in case it gets over used and blow something up. And it's just like a one-time use thing. So probably when this blows, I'll actually get an inline fuse or like a like an actual circuit breaker I flip back on. So yeah, little update on the electronics so i pretty much got the fuel pump ready to go back in i just got to make lines for it but um i pin this out so purple goes power to the pump and i accidentally pinned it wrong the first time because there's a purple wire so i 
just thought, but the purple wire is actually um, the um, ohm like sender. So I could always add that in to put that on like my screen to see how my fuel level or like the ohm resistor, whatever thing in there. And then um, like as an output, but the gray is power. So I got gray running to the purple and then it's got that ground, but then it's got another ground. I put a 10 gauge in for this black with white stripe, which is it's dual ground. So it's got a it's grounded itself that goes up, which is the solid, uh, solid. No, no, uh, this one is, uh, the one that pumps that grounds itself is the one that goes to, would plug into this one. And I'm just going to ground this to the battery or something. And then solid black is, solid black is the ground from the, oh no, solid ground is the pump itself. The black with white stripe is the ground from the pump. So it's got power and ground to the pump. And so I got dual, I'm dual grounding it, this thing. So this one, I'm probably just gonna go straight to the battery. It's gonna look jank. I wish I would've got a, a ground bus bar, like a black one, but I ran out. I don't really feel like buying another one, especially since this is right here. So yeah, it looks a little messy, but it'll work. Here's what I'm doing for the ground off the battery. I got, I cleaned it up a little bit right there bolted and then i drilled a hole through there for this to go through and this is off the ac grommet or like the for that harness and i drilled it and then i kind of like shaved this down a little bit um, let's see here yeah there it goes and then that fits right in there and then my line will or my cable will come up through here so it fits mint oh yeah I'm gonna show how I did my battery. I took the old small block one, or the one that was in the original car, and then put like, just, like a nut in the washer to space it up. And then just through there, it's a 5 16 hole. And I put little spacers, like, I don't know, it's like aluminum. And yeah, I mean, it moves a little bit, but it's solid enough. You know, everything still reaches right. Um, yeah, this is, best. this is probably the best way that I could have done it. Just because I don't know what I'm doing. And I feel like it turned out pretty good. Um, next thing, I got to figure out um, where my fuel lines, once they come in through there, where they're going to exit. And then go to the front of the car. So, yeah, I'll update when I find out where I cut the hole for that. All right, and that last clip, which was Sunday night, it's Monday now. Um, I was showing you like how I did the battery hold down and like all the cables back there, the ground and everything. So I got wiring back there sorted. I think, I think the wiring is done back there. All I need to do is just like hook it up to the post. And then when I get the fuel pump in, cause I'm waiting on a fitting from Racetronics, uh, just plug the, uh, harness in back there that I, my weather pack connections and everything. And then, um, so everything, so like, I believe everything from here back is wired i think now it's just like uh getting like fittings and stuff and not fittings i'm talking about wiring still um i gotta figure out which wire out of the stock harness i could run to uh, my switched my switched power and then that'll do the fuse block so i could have like turn signals and brake lights because you know i need those um then oh yeah i want to show how i got my um all my like sensors and my fittings and everything for like the back of the intake i want to show that it's pretty epic so instead of running in my like uh turbo feed off some weird place or getting an aftermarket running a big 4 in or a little 4 in like a big line all the way over here all i did was get a t or not a t but like that and that go or it's a another fitting that goes into the uh, oil sensor ports like i forgot what thread it is but it goes to eighth inch mpt then that block is eighth inch npt male that screws into there then it's got two females one out the top one out the side um so there's my oil pressure sensor and then here is like here's gonna be my turbo feed and uh, yeah i gotta move some out of the way but that's the turbo feed for the line and then cam sensor and then down here ict billet because normally it's like a rubber thing that goes in there but ict billet because there's no threads in this hole it like you would have to buy a block off plate 
but this is ICT billets thing. I, I looked up like Holly high RAM, like map sensor block off. And then this came up and it goes to 8th inch NPT. So I'm going to put my, um, I'm going to block it off for now because I don't have a use for it. Um, up here, the another 8th inch NPT. This is the T I originally bought for here, but it doesn't clear the block uh, for uh, that. Or it doesn't clear the block for either of these or the head or whatever. It's like in the way. So this T actually worked perfect to run the um, uh, 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 map sensor. Five, oh, there goes the wrench. Five. That's a five bar low dollar. All everything's low dollar pretty much. And then this one's probably going to be my quarter inch push lock to my fuel pressure regulator reference um for the boost reference and that's the only thing i'm gonna run for um like pressure right now because i'm not gonna connect my blow valves or wastegate yet because i'm just trying to get it at least so i could drive it to the end of or to school or something so i'm trying to get every get everything done and then i can go back and do it because it wouldn't be much because mm. i have no money right now and i'll probably get a motion block and uh run like a quarter inch push lock to um uh or no that motion yeah quarter inch push lock to a motion block and then run all my uh hose to blow off valve wastegate and everything else i need but yeah that's how i got it set up oh and then this is a uh, big i have, i don't remember if that's half inch to a three ace barb and then, then my three ace barb and then since it's boosted you need a one-way check valve in the brake booster hose so you don't over boost the booster you know so i gotta figure out which way to put that in and that'll be my brake booster line so yeah, I'm hoping to get everything set. So, and like, cause I like, even over here that I'm gonna, this is a small block hose, cause it's tight right there. I'm gonna chop it off right here. And I got a straight, you know, and then of course it's red, cause you know, hot rod. Um, that'll go on there, uh, my three gauge hose. Oh, and then here's my, I don't know why, I couldn't find one for like a couple cents. So I just bought a whole pack of two log to quarter inch for that. And I also bought a pigtail because I forgot. It was like the first one of the things like I looked at when I got the alternator is I need a pigtail with a resistor wire in it to run to switch power. But I don't know why I forgot to buy one until today. So hopefully that comes in pretty soon. I could always run like a spade, but that's kind of like, you know, presidential solution. So, yeah, got these truck coils on from the old 48 I dropped on the ground. Dude, they're freaking mint. I hope they work. Cause I like the look of them. Cause it, like I said, like everything on this car matches the look of the car. So I'm hoping they work. Um, if not, I get coils for cheap. And I put our wires and plugs by at the end of the week. All right. So since last, I kind of fabbed up this little piece that I'm gonna have my dad either or I could probably blaze it in here. I was gonna you know, I was gonna have him ticket. He said he's got some blaze rod. Cause it's both aluminum and then i was gonna bend it self tapper bolt it through there and then i got this kind of like temporary trans mount i mean it's it's kind of solid <laughs> um it's just through that uh core support like the top one and then it's got these like tab things came with it that one this is what's so jank about it is it's right there oh, i could tell my voice is messed up it's 2 a.m on a school night you know ah oh. But, um, got that thermostat. I don't know if I already showed that. I got the harness already pretty much done. I, I got to ground this one to head and also do the head to the frame. Because I got a ground back there going from battery to frame. I got ground going to body and harness to that head. And I need another one from engine to frame. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I got the, I got fuel rails in now with the injectors snake eater 1500s um I'll, i didn't make any lines to go back here yet because i don't have the pump in so i can't really tell where things are gonna go but this is how i'm doing my fuel system i, I i'm pretty happy on how this turned out on how everything is gonna sit but like here i'm gonna put like an uh an eight orb and then an eight orb and then it's gonna come up one line from the back of the car split into a y and then go up one's gonna go into here one's gonna go into there probably at like either this one probably a 45 that one probably a 90 and then and when it goes to the front of the rails it's gonna cross over this side and i already made the crossover for this side 
go into the uh, regulator and then this side is just screwed straight into the thing and my return is gonna go because it's just like a you know on the truck intakes they have the like split like the feed lines well mine is gonna go across right across this holly efi like hopefully right above it so you can still see the holly efi and then it's just gonna cross right over and probably down down through here i'm gonna run it along the head or, or the valve cover valve cover and down and back to the return so i'm kind of happy with how that turned out and the, everything's gonna fit too because i was looking at a picture on how this belt runs and the belt like runs from like here and it like stay it stays under under this bolt so it should fit the only thing i'm still worried about now is if that power steering pulley is gonna hit if it is i'm i'm fucking grinding stuff i don't care i'm gonna get i'm i'd or I just might not run power steering. I'll find a belt that'll fit. Um, for just for now, just so I could at least drive it to like end of school or something, graduation. But yeah, wiring is is like set up. Now it needs fuel, and then a turbo kit, and then it runs. No, well, pretty close actually. Yeah, that's probably gonna wrap it up. Dude, it's it's been a long couple last days uh, it's what 2 a.m it's like one it's like 201 and i got school in about four hours that's how you do it i'm on a grind man oh major letdown the throttle cable i got from a truck doesn't fit it's like a couple inches too short so i had to order some like universal like bolt together thing and i already had a bracket from holly coming that fits a truck uh a truck thing but this new thing it's like a low it's like a low car where it like like screws together so i'm just gonna screw it together on the truck bracket and send it that way it probably it should work i don't see why it wouldn't um yeah all i did was that brake booster hose the check valve i don't think i don't know if i got that on fin i don't know if i showed it but i finished up this i put that on there the big wire I'm waiting on a pigtail with the resistor for that to put it to my switch power. I probably already said that. I'm just saying, I'm just repeating things. Oh, look what I found. Off an old valve cover, a freaking truck, like extendo thing. That thing's freaking beast. I'm, I want this thing to look stock as possible. After I get fuel in, I should have my vacuum stuff. So I could, this is like a 1 16th NPT. So I got a 1 16th NPT to quarter push lock. Put that yeah, in. Come out of here. That T. That T. That T is gonna go over there and do that. That's the only thing that's gonna be connected to any vacuums. Blow off valve, wastegate, none. It's just gonna run off gate pressure. Um, need to get this little set up. And after fuel lines, I could do trans lines. I'm hoping these kind of fit though. These ones are off an old, the same 4L60 that's on it, but it was for like an LT1. It was kind of a big car, a Caprice. I don't. I think I remember it was. Those so are, I'm, I'm hoping those are long enough to fit on the uh on this not even long enough just so that they're at least close even if they're too long i'll just zipper them up somewhere um if i get the fuel system done i could wait now fittings from racetronics canada um yeah once i get that fitting the fuel tank's going in i'm setting all my wires up got to figure out which wire got to test for like continuity out of the there's, there's two red wires out of the stock harness over there it's now i gotta figure out which one <clears throat> goes to the fuse back and which one fuse box which one was like i don't know if one was a jumper whoever put it in secondary i don't know but yeah this is probably gonna video this is gonna be a video in itself i know it is because there's quite a bit of like action and checkpoints up so yeah good night